Thank you very much. Uh, I would like to thank the organizing committee for inviting me for, uh, to talk in this very important meeting, the Beijing the Gap. Plastic anemia is common in Asia as compared to the incident in the West. Based on the last uh, epidemiologic study in Thailand, uh, the incidence of plastic anemia in Thailand is at four per million per year. It's about uh, twice higher than the incidence as in Europe, as reported by the International Cannulocytosis and Plastic Anemia Study. And uh, the etiology of uh, uh, plastic anemia in Thailand is mostly idiopathic. Only 3% uh, of the etiologic fraction is caused by drug compared to about 27% in the ITMAN AS study. So what I'm going to discuss with you today is to, uh, how to manage a patient with uh, plastic anemia, especially uh, the use of mass sibling transplant as the first line treatment, and how can we improve the outcome of mass sibling transplant in the treatment of aplastic anemia. So as you know, in order to determine the uh, first line therapy for aplastic anemia, depend, it depends on uh, the severity of the disease, the age of the patient, and the availability of uh, HLA mass sibling donor. Patient with uh, severe plastic anemia at below uh, 40 years old, uh, HLA identical sibling bone marrow transplant is the first line therapy. In those uh, at over 40 years old, immunosuppressive therapy, uh, at over 40 years old, uh, immunosuppressive therapy is the first line treatment. In patients with non-severe plastic anemia who become uh, transfusion uh, dependent, uh, the immunosuppressive therapy with the ATG and cyclosporin is the uh, first line treat treatment. However, uh, BMT is the uh, second line treatment uh, in patients uh, who fail to respond to ATG and cyclosporin. So is allo stem cell transplant the first right option for plastic anemia if a sibling donor available? Of course, I would like to answer that yes. And what are the evidence for that? Uh, based on EBMT data of, um, of, of nearly uh, 2,500 patients, indicating that uh, first-line treatment with bone marrow transplantation give uh, better 10 years survival in comparison to immunosuppressive therapy. And those uh, favorable predictors include younger age at the time of transplant, and transplant after the year 1996, and transplant with the mass sibling donor, and short duration from diagnosis to transplant and conditioning regimen without radiation. In meta-analysis of a 26 non-landomite control study, uh, including nearly 8,000 patients, uh, favor uh, hemo hemopoietic stem cell transplant at the treatment, uh, first-line treatment of uh, severe plastic anemia in comparison to immunosuppressive therapy. Although uh, these uh, studies are heterogeneity, uh, which did not justify a pool estimate. The result of a uh, mass sibling transplant in a plastic anemia uh, during the past decades, uh, it show in, uh, it show in, 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 in this uh, graph, as you can see, the result of mass sibling transplant have improved over time, and the same is true for immunosuppressive therapy. However, uh, the result of immunosuppressive therapy uh, during the last two decades seem to be unchanged. 
That means that uh, the treatment with the bone marrow transplantation uh, seem to be uh, uh, progressively improved uh, over time. How about the quality of light after transplantation? Data from Switzerland uh, study uh, quality adjust analysis in uh, patients with aplastic anemia who receive bone marrow transplant in comparison to immunosuppressive therapy. As you can see, the survival and the even free survival uh, and uh, Q-twist. Q-twist is a time without symptom and toxicity are similar in both groups. However, if, if you look into the detail, you can see that in bone marrow treated patient has longer periods free from symptoms, while immunosuppressive therapy group uh, need uh, more medi uh, closer medical care more uh, transfusion support and medications that uh, mean that the uh, patient who received the bone marrow transplant as first line treatment uh, have a better quality of life in comparison to uh, immunosuppressive therapy. If uh, you look into the detail of the uh, duration of treatment related toxicity, uh, duration of transfusion dependency, uh, evidence of a partial remission, and uh, duration of uh, having a second coronary disorders, and the development of extensive chronic GUSD. As you can see from here, the, uh, when, you compare, when we compare the mean years per patient between both two groups, in those with the, who uh, received the immunosuppressive therapy with ATG has a longer, significant longer uh, treatment-related toxicity, transfusion dependency, uh, uh, and more partial emission and second clonal disorder. Except GVSD is, chronic GVSD is more common in those who receive a bone marrow transplant. At present, uh, the long-term outcome of uh, mass sibling transplant in aplastic anemia is favorable. The long-term overall survival is up to 75 to 80 percent. However, there are still uh, unresolved problem, uh, issues, including the incident of graft failure is still uh, at 4 to 14 percent and the incidence of severe chronic GVSD is about uh, 30 to 40 percent. How can we improve the results of mass sibling transplant in uh, aplastic anemia? I would like to discuss about the uh, risk factor that uh, predict the outcome of stem cell transplant in aplastic anemia. Those include the, ed, the interval from diagnosis to transplant, the type of conditioning regimen, the uh, stem, cell, stem cell cells, and lastly, the bone marrow cell doors. The EBMT data show that uh, the, the long-term overall survival in young patients at below 20 is approximately uh, 90%. In those uh, at below uh, at over 50, uh, the overall the long-term overall survival is lowest at uh, about uh, 40 percent. However, in those uh, at between from uh, 21 to about 40, the long-term uh, overall survival vary from 69 to uh, 77 percent and that uh, no difference between this uh, overall survival in the age group range from uh, 11 to 30 versus 31 uh, to 40, and at range uh, 31 to 40 versus uh, 31 to uh, 50. From this EBMT uh, data, we can conclude that uh, the upper limit of 
uh, age for hemopoietic stem cell transplant should be up to uh, 50 years. So the results of uh, hemopoietic stem cell transplant in, older, in patients with older than 40 years uh, have been studied in, uh, uh, by Seattle group uh, using the uh, high dose cyclophosphamide and horse ATG. And as you can see from here, the long term overall survival is about 65%, and the uh, uh, incidence of acute GUSD is about 30%, and chronic GUSD is 26%. However, there the are still report that it has impact on the outcome of bone marrow transplantation. Data from Toronto indicated that the uh, overall survival in patients uh, with different age group uh, below 20 years old, uh, 22 to 40 years old, and over 40 years old uh, different. And the incidence of acute GUSD also different uh, among uh, different age group, although the, chronic, the incidence of chronic GUSD is low in patients at lower than 20, and in those uh, at over uh, 20, the incidence are similar. How uh, the interval from diagnosis to transplant and prior transplant immunosuppressive therapy influence uh, the outcome of uh, transplant in patients with aplastic anemia. As you can see from uh, this EBMT data, uh, the longer interval from diagnosis to transplant has a, a, a poorer uh, overall survival in comparison to endorsed uh, with a shorter duration from diagnosis to time span. And the same is true for history of uh, um, prior immunosuppressive therapy, except uh, the recent data uh, after 1998. Uh, we did not find any uh, influence of uh, pre-immunosuppressive therapy. Psycho high dose cyclophosphamide is the standard conditioning for uh, transplant in a plastic anemia. Early data from uh, Seattle indicated that a patient who received multiple transfusion has an uh, unfavorable uh, outcome with lower than 50% overall survival. However, in those with uh, multiple transfusion, the addition of uh, pluripart mononuclear cell or buffy coat can improve the overall survival and transplant uh, to the patient without uh, transfusion gave uh, the best outcome. Uh, they also uh, analyzed the number of uh, transfusion that influenced the outcome of transplant. They divide patients into two groups, and those uh, receive uh, transfusion less than 20 units compared to those who received the transfusion more than 20 units. As you can see, the long-term uh, overall survival uh, is significantly better in those who received transfusion less than 20. Therefore, we can conclude that a transplantation uh, in a plastic anemia should be performed when the patient has not received a uh, transfusion or even accessory, they should not receive transfusion more than 20 units. The conditioning uh, regimen, uh, other than cyclophosphamide, uh, show poor uh, outcome in comparison to uh, cyclophosphamide, 200 milligram per kilo. In those with uh, multiple times few patients 
who undergo uh, BMT, uh, the overall survival is poor due to uh, the high rate of calf failure. So uh, the Seattle group report the uh, addition of ATG to cyclophosphamide uh, in conditioning, and they found the much improved in the overall survival. And the chronic GSD incident is not high. And the effect of ATG in conditioning regimen is confirmed uh, in EBMT data, both uh, in bone marrow transplant or pluripotent stem cell transplant. Uh, the use of uh, ATG uh, give uh, better overall survival compared to uh, without uh, ATG in the conditioning regimen. And uh, uh, good, outco good outcome uh, with ATG has been shown not only in uh, young patients, but also in older patients. Therefore, we can conclude that ATG uh, is a favorable predictor to outcome, both for bone marrow transplant and pre blood stem cell transplant, especially in patients at over 20 years. And uh, the incidence of chronic GSD uh, in those who receive ATG uh, in addition in conditioning uh, is lower than uh, those who receive only cyclophosphamide. And the overall survival is uh, better compared to those uh, who receive no ATG. The study by Dr. Chambrin uh, in a ladder mice control study compared cyclophosphamide versus cyclophosphamide and ATG showed that no difference in uh, graft failure, graft versus disease, and survival. And uh, based on uh, his study, the addition of ATG to conditioning regimen did not uh, significantly improve the outcome. So uh, uh, in patients with older age, the main problem is still the graph failure. So how can we improve uh, the outcome? So this slide shows uh, the addition of uh, fudarabine to cyclophosphamide as a conditioning regimen in patients with older age over 30 years old, as reported by uh, EBMT and Bacicarubo. As you can see, uh, in, in uh, patients who receive a conditioning uh, comprising fudarabine, cyclophosphamide, and ATG, has a higher, higher probability of overall survival when adjusted for recipient AIDS. And there was no difference in GSD, and uh, there was a reduced in incidence of graft failure, 0% compared to uh, 11%. So therefore, one can conclude that in patients that over 30 years old, uh, food in best conditioning can prevent uh, the incidence of graft failure and can improve the long-term overall survival. There are several uh, more reports about the results of food in best conditioning in mass sibling transplant and the long-term overall survival range from 77% to about 100%. Another problem uh, with the stem cell transplant in a plastic anemia is the graft versus host disease, especially chronic GBSD. So uh, with the, this condi conditional regimen comprising fudarabine, cyclophosphamide, and alemtuzumab, the incidence of uh, acute GBSD is only 13% and chronic GBSD reduced to only 4%. And there was a low incidence of viral infection. 
So lm 2 uh, best conditioning can be used uh, to overcome the problem of chronic GVSD and resulting in the uh, long-term disease, long-term uh, overall survival. What about the uh, gold marrow of cell dose? Data from Seattle show that uh, uh, different uh, bone marrow cell dose varying from less than uh, two titan to the S, uh, uh, more than uh, 2.6 uh, 10 titan to the eight, and uh, between 2.1 and 2.5 uh, 10 titan to the eight. As you can see from here, the uh, best survival uh, was observed in patients received uh, bone marrow cell uh, varying from 2 to about 2.5, uh, 10 times to the edge. If uh, more uh, bone marrow mononuclear cells are given, there's the likelihood of developed chronic USD is higher. What is the suitable source of uh, stem cell? Uh, between uh, bone marrow and peripheral stem cell. Uh, recent analysis of eBMT data by Basicalupo show that um, BMT uh, gives significantly higher overall survival compared to peripheral stem cell transplant. And the incidence of acute GVSD, uh, severe acute GVSD, chronic GVSD, extensive chronic GVSD uh, were, are, are lower in BMT group compared to a uh, stem cell. And the uh, benefit of BMT uh, is shown in both uh, younger patients and older patients. In this study, they also identified the negative predictor of uh, mass sibling transplant in severe plastic anemia uh, those in, include the longer uh, interval from diagnosis to treatment, the uh, older age more than uh, 20 years, and the use of other conditioning other than uh, psychophosphamide, and the conditioning without uh, ATG. Those are significant uh, negative predictor for mass sibling transplant in a plastic anemia. If we divide uh, the patients into uh, good risk, intermediate risk, and high risk according to the number of the uh, negative predictors, those with a zero to one negative predictor is a high risk, giving a better overall survival up to 89%. And those with the three to four negative predictor uh, uh, do poorest with the 64% of uh, long-term overall survival and those with two negative predictors, intermediate. And they, they show that in those with high risk, intermediate risk, and poor risk, BMT bone marrow transplantation uh, have a favorable outcome in comparison to uh, private stem cell transplant. So, what is the For over time, you can try to wrap. what is the best uh, regimen for GBS prophylaxis? This study showed that the cyclosporin and methotrexate it uh, more benefit in comparison to cyclosporin alone. What are the new protocol for the treatment of uh, a plastic anemia as conditioning and GVSD prophylaxis? There are uh, a report who uh, present two patients with older age who receive myeloablative regimen with uh, high dose uh, busulfan and cyclophosphamide followed by post-transplant uh, cyclophosphamide at day three and day four. And 
both patients have successful engrafment. In our uh, institution, we develop a regimen comprising a cyclophosma 60 milligram per kilo per day uh, for two days, uh, followed by ATG 2.5 milligram per kilo per day, and cyclophosphamide uh, post-transplant at 50 milligram uh, per kilo per day uh, on day three and day four. In a patient with the multiple tonne fields, uh, plastic anemia, and up to now, for six months after transplant, uh, the patients are still uh, had uh, full hematologic recovery. So I would like to summarize uh, that hemopoietic stem cell transplant in younger patients give better outcome, and hemopoietic stem cell transplant uh, may be per performed in patients up to age 50 years with comparable outcome to patients at below 40 years. Early transplant can improve survival, and uh, previous immunosuppressive therapy seem to have less effect on survival. Standard conditioning regimen is hydrocyclophosphamide with or without ATG, and food therapy best conditioning give better outcome in older patients over 30 years old. And marrow cell dose of 2.1 and 2.5 times 10 to the 8 is most appropriate to be transplanted with good outcome. And BMT is a standard therapy. But stem cell transplant should not be performed because the high incidence of GVSD and uh, lower uh, overall survival. Cyclosporin and shot methotexate is the standard GVSD prophylaxis. Thank you very much.